Greetings. For those of you who have seen some of our previous episodes featuring the Radio Shack TRS-80 Model 1, you may have noticed that they always had a bit of a keyboard or a key press problem, uh, double triggering, sometimes you had to press a key three times or put your finger on it and kind of exercise it for it to register. Some keys wouldn't work at all. And uh, Radio Shack actually introduced a keyboard debounce routine in some of their later DOS programs. But I think the best approach to this is to actually clean the key contacts. So that's what we're going to do today. First, we will uh, press the secret release uh, keyboard uh, screws button that is hidden down here and what that does is it removes the all six screws that hold the case together and conveniently stores them in a small container for later usage it is completely the procedure is completely noiseless and once we're done we lift off the top of the case and now we have access to the keyboard. You could of course do this the hard way, leave the case together and get one of uh, them fancy gadgets that kind of wrap around a key and pull it out, but this way even somebody fat fingered like me can get their fingers in here and just pull the keys off. and on and on and on and then all the keys are gone there they are they need to the keys themselves need to be cleaned there is no nothing metallic on them I just simply push down one of these guys and I'll show you the contacts inside that by that action close. Looking at the contacts a little closer and again the way they work is you press this down and the two contacts meet. But if you look at this I don't know what it is but there's some nasty residue on top of these contacts here that at first glance looks like rust, but that is not rust. That is, I hate to speculate what it is, but it's not good. So uh, let's see how we can get this cleaned up a bit. First we'll use some compressed air to see if any of this stuff comes out. It doesn't budge. So, uh, oh, it does come off and falls right back into the well. So, again, it's whatever it is, it's dried. It seems to have been mostly collected on top of the uh, contacts rather than going in between them, but we will attend to that. So first let's go through and lightly try to get rid of whatever that residue is, blow it out with some air, and then continue. The pointer method didn't work too well, so uh, we're going to use a Q-tip. Here's like three keys worth of stuff that came out. Very nice. So we'll go through each one of them. I mean, I will put IPA in there first. Basically inject IPA. Let it loosen whatever that stuff is. 
The problem with the pointer was it dislodged stuff, but it all fell back inside. So let's clean this part and continue. So be very careful with the Q-tips so you don't bend or worse break any of those contacts. I didn't, so they're still pretty sturdy, but that crud that was basically stuck to the top of the contacts, I cleaned up about half of it and the other half fell in between the contacts. So uh, what I'm going to try next is bathe it again, just a little section here. And uh, put some air on it. And that does clean it up. Of course, as I said, the uh, unfortunately, some of that stuff just fell to the bottom of the keyboard enclosure or key enclosure here, but it looks like the contacts have been cleaned up. So let me go through this some more with the air and dig out a bunch of other things and continue. So the contacts are actually beginning to shine again instead of having the dull brown color with the unknown particles on it. Going in between the two contacts with a sliver of a business card also at least helped dislodge everything. Some more application of IPA and compressed air finally seemed to have gotten most of the crap out. And so now we got to get to the final stage. And that is contact cleaner. I know that a lot of people especially on YouTube, prefer this, and it works okay, but it's rather expensive and it's very hard to dose the amount of cleaner that comes out of this with the spray cans. I mean, either it doesn't come or then all of a sudden it comes full blast. Since this is almost empty, I found something else I had, and that's this Jiffy bath. And the reason I like it is it also contains a bit of a lubricant and it's really easy to dose the spray pretty reliably. So what we're going to do, you know, we're going to aim see it puts out exactly well just a little bit also, this leaves very little residue, whereas I found that deoxid leaves more of a residue, and that along with the problem of not being able to dose it properly, usually leaves some mess behind. Not saying it that that uh, <clears throat> deoxid doesn't work, it works well, but this stuff seems to work just as well. So while the contact cleaner is doing its business, it's time to clean the keys themselves. You can dump them in a bowl with dishwashing liquid, put them in the dishwasher, whatever you prefer. But uh, I just take a few of them, douse them with window cleaner, get a paper towel, and clean them up. I'm I must say, I'm kind of impressed with the quality of the keyboard that it lasted this long. It's not its fault that people dripped unknown substances or dripped or whichever way they got in, but yeah, you just put them back and press them in place. Rinse and repeat, literally. See you when we're done. Okay, we got a nice shiny good looking dirt magnet here. Ready to give us years of performance and good operation. 
All that's left to do is to see if we were actually successful cleaning those keys or the key contacts. Put this on, hit the auto button that will retrieve and reinsert the screws in the case, and then test it. Okay. No bouncing. And they're all doing their job. So, that's a fix. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And we'll see you next time.